All right, my recording started, which means you need to stop typing in the chat, okay? No more chat typing. All right, so remember yesterday, we stopped. They were at the police station, and I stopped. So I told you it's a good part. Remember, Sergeant Bickle, like, rolled out. He's been gone for an hour. They're just waiting and waiting and waiting, and who knows? So we were at... 187 where it says sergeant bickle finally returned everyone please get there 187 sergeant bickle finally returned I'm telling you love it behind him was phoebe's father phoebe looked extensively relieved but i knew it was not a coincidence that her father was there so phoebe's over here thinking oh my father came to the police station but let's get real the police probably called phoebe's father and was like hi can you come get your daughter who's like you know acting crazy so Phoebe's thinking that her father came to help her, but really her father came to pick her up, and Sal's aware of that. Miss Winterbottom, Sergeant Bickle said, your father's going to take you and your friend home now. But, Phoebe said, Mr. Winterbottom will be in touch. And if you would like me to speak with Mrs. Cadaver, oh no, Mr. Winterbottom said. He looked embarrassed. Really, that won't be necessary. I do apologize. We followed Mr. Winterbottom outside. In the car, he said nothing. I thought he might drop me off at my house, but he didn't. When we got to their house, the only thing he said was Phoebe. I'm going to go talk with Mrs. Cadaver. You and Sal wait here. Mrs. Cadaver was unable to give him any more information about Phoebe's mother's call. All Mrs. Winterbottom had said was that she would phone soon. That's all, Phoebe asked. Your mother also asked Mrs. Cadaver how you and Prudence were. Mrs. Cadaver told her that you and Prudence were fine. Well, I am not fine, Phoebe said. And what does Mrs. Cadaver know anyways? And besides, Mrs. Cadaver is making the whole thing up. You should let the police talk to her. You should ask her about the rhododendron. You should find out who the lunatic is. Mrs. Cadaver probably hired him. You should. Phoebe, your imagination is running away with you. It is not. Mom loves me, and she would not leave me without any explanation. Uh, then her father began to cry so sad so did they get anywhere with going to the police station no. no they got nowhere besides her father picking her up and you know being a little bit embarrassed that his daughter came here to be like oh someone killed my mom and then though there's no proof of that anywhere but obviously phoebe it's clearly getting to the dad now if he's crying like he's getting upset about it now evan well no, I mean, she believes there's a thing. And she didn't call the police. She went to the police. But anyways, it's it's bad. It's, it's just bad all around. Mr. Winterbottom's clearly upset about it. No one knows where she is. Apparently, she's just, she's, you know, just away. She'll phone soon. Like, what does that mean? Soon? Like, who's soon? My soon? Your soon? Like, that is not helpful. 30 is breaking in. Dun, 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 dun. Breaking in, dun 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 dun. Like breaking into what? Breaking in where? Breaking in some shoes? Breaking in the house? What are we doing? Golden, Graham said. What a lot of birds of sadness winging in their way around PB's family. Graham said, You liked PB, didn't you, Salamonica? I did like Phoebe. In spite of all her wild tales and her cholesterol madness and her annoying comments, there was something about PB or Phoebe that was like a magnet. I was drawn to her. I was pretty sure that underneath all that odd behavior was someone who was frightened. And in a strange way, she was like another version of me. She acted out the way I sometimes felt. Mrs. Jones's class, do I need to come have a visit with you guys or can we focus? Because so far there's nothing funny happening in this book, so I'm not sure why I see some friends laughing. Let's be focused, Mrs. Jones's class. I don't think you want to visit. I do not think that Phoebe actually planned. All right, sorry, let me try it again. I, I said Mrs. Jones's. I did not say Mrs. Siddig's landed. I did not think that Phoebe actually planned to break into Mrs. Cadaver's house. But as Phoebe was going to bed, she saw Mrs. Cadaver in her nurse's uniform get in her car and leave. Phoebe waited until her father was asleep, and then she phoned me. You've got to come over, she said. It's urgent. But Phoebe, it's late. It's dark. It's urgent, Sal. All right, so Phoebe's got no mom right now. Her sister's doing who knows what, and her dad's asleep, and she's going to call up Sal, and they're going to go break into someone's house. Probably not a good idea. 
Phoebe was waiting in front of Mrs. Cadaver's house. There were no lights on at Mrs. Cadaver's. Phoebe said, come on. And she started up the walk. I'll admit, I was reluctant. Reluctant means like you don't want to do it. Like you're like, eh, maybe I shouldn't. Like obviously Sal, you know, she's the one thinking clearly. Like, should you just go into someone's house? Even if you know them, if they're not there or you don't have permission, you should not go into people's houses. I just want to take a quick look, she said. She crept up onto the porch and stood by the door. She listened, tapped twice, and turned the doorknob. The door was unlocked. I don't think Phoebe intended to go inside, but she did. And I followed. We stood in the dark hallway. In the room to the right, a shaft of light from a street lamp came in through the window. We went into that room. We both nearly leaped through the window when we saw someone. Sal? I started looking back towards the door. It's a ghost, Phoebe said. Come here, the voice said. As my eyes adjusted to the dim light, I could see someone huddled in the corner, huddled in a chair in the far corner. When I saw the cane, I was relieved. Mrs. Partridge? Remember, Mrs. Cadaver's mother lives with her. It's Mrs. Partridge. So Mrs. Cadaver left for work, but her mom who lives there clearly still there, and the girls did not think of that. So they're in someone's house, and Mrs. Partridge, who remembers blind, but she knew it was Sal somehow, just was like, Sal? So luckily it's someone they know and not, you know, like, well, we don't know. Are they going to get in trouble? Is Mrs. Partridge going to be mad? I'm her mom. Come here, she said. Who's that with you? Is that Phoebe? Phoebe said yes. Her voice was high and quivery. I was just sitting here reading, Mrs. Partridge said. It's awfully dark in here, I said, bumping a table. Mrs. Partridge laughed, a wicked laugh. It's always dark in here. I don't need lights, but you can turn one on if you want to. Well, she probably heard. People that are blind, so if you lose one of your senses, like, you know, your five senses, taste, smell, touch, seeing, hearing, if you were to lose one of those, your other senses are heightened. So she probably heard the door open. She probably knows like what the sound of different people's footsteps are. So that's how she probably knew it was Sal. And she just made a joke because she's like, I'm reading. Okay, well, how do blind people read? They read Braille. They read with their fingers. You don't read with your eyeballs when you're blind. So Sal's like, isn't it too dark to read? She's blind. It's always dark for her. So she can read in the dark because she reads with her fingers. You don't need light to touch something, you know? So she made a joke like, oh, yeah, it's always dark. But she probably knew it was her because the sound of her footsteps and stuff. Because when one of your senses is taken away, your others are super heightened. As I stood around looking for a lamp, Phoebe stood, frozen near the doorway. There, I said, that's much better. Mrs. Partridge, Partridge was sitting in a big overstuffed chair. She was wearing a purple bathrobe and pink slippers with a flappy bunny ears on the toes. On her lap was a brook. Her fingers resting on the page. Is it Braille? I asked, waving at Phoebe to come in the room. I was afraid she was going to run out and leave me. Mrs. Partridge handed me the book, and I slid my fingers over the raised bumps. How did you know it was us? Um, so I said your senses are smell, touch, like hand touch, hearing, seeing, and was it taste? without arms like that's a diff totally different thing we're talking about your senses if you lose your hearing you know your sight is you you know pretty spot on but if you lose your sight normally your hearing that's what you focus on okay if you lost your sense of smell like your sense of taste would be more important to you even if it's not like physically heightened that becomes more important to you okay if you can't see with your eyes your hearing becomes really really important okay i don't know about the whole leg thing because that's not what i was talking about how did you know it was us? I asked. I just knew. She said, your shoes make a particular sound and you have a particular smell. So there you go. She can't see them. So she smelled them. You know how some people just smell like their house or certain soaps or whatever. Some people just smell the way they smell. So she smelled Sal. So that's a sense. Your nose. She smelled them and she heard the way her shoes, like the sounds her shoes make. So she knew it was her, even though she couldn't see. What's the name of this book? What's it about? Mrs. Partridge said, murder at midnight. It's a mystery. Phoebe said, Erp, and looked around the room. Each time I went into that house, I noticed a new thing. It was a scary place. The walls were lined with shelves crammed with old musty books. On the floor were three rugs with dark swirly patterns of wild beasts and forests. Two chairs were covered with similar ghastly design. A sofa was draped in bearskin. On the wall behind the couch were two thumping, grim African masks. The mouths of the masks were wide open as if it were in the midst of a scream. 
Everywhere you looked, there was something startling. A stuffed squirrel, a kite in the shape of a dragon, a wooden cow with a spear piercing its side. Goodness, Phoebe said, what a lot of, of unusual things. She knelt to examine a spot on the floor. What's the matter, Mrs. Partridge said. Phoebe jumped up. Nothing, nothing whatsoever. Did I drop something on the floor, Mrs. Partridge asked? No, nothing whatsoever on the floor, Phoebe said. Leaning against the back of the sofa was an enormous sword. Phoebe examined the blade. Careful, you don't cut yourself, Mrs. Partridge said. Phoebe stepped back. Even I found this unsettling. Mrs. Partridge could see what Phoebe was doing, even though she couldn't actually see her. Mrs. Partridge said, isn't it a grandiful room? Grandiful and a little peculable, peculable, peculable too, I suppose. So someone probably, whether it's Mrs. Partridge or Mrs. Cadaver, probably likes weird things. I shouldn't say weird because you may like those things too. But unusual things, things that might be a little bit odd to other people. People like maybe they've traveled a lot or maybe they're collectors and there's just a lot of different things in the room, like a sword. Like I don't have a sword in my living room, but you know, it's whatever to each their own, you know, who knows? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. By the way, Mrs. Partridge said, as we reached for the doorway, what was it you wanted? So finally, Mrs. Partridge is like, so why were you in the house? You know, Phoebe looked at me and I looked at Phoebe. We were just passing by, I said, and we thought, we would see how you were doing. That's nice, Mrs. Partridge said, patting her knees. Oh, Phoebe, I think I met your brother. Phoebe said, I don't have a brother. Oh, Mrs. Partridge tapped her head. I guess this old noggin isn't as sharp as it used to be. As we left, she said, goodness, you girls stay up late. Outside, Phoebe said, I'll make a list of items which the police will want to investigate further. The sore, the suspicious spot, spot on the floor, and several hair strands which I picked up. Phoebe. You know, when you said your mother would never leave you without an explanation, well, she might. A person, a mother might do that. Phoebe said, my mother wouldn't. My mother loves me. But she might love you and still not be able to explain. I was thinking about the letter my mother left me. Maybe it would be too painful for her to explain. Maybe it would be too permanent. I don't know what in the world you are talking about. She might not come back, Phoebe. Shut up, Sal. She might not. I just think you should be prepared. She is too coming back. You don't know what you're talking about. You're being horrid. Phoebe ran into the house. Okay, so. I don't know, like, I'm sh like, maybe this is just me, but if I thought someone killed my mom, like, I don't think they're going to use a sword. Okay, but Phoebe saw a sword and she's like, yep, police are going to want to check out the sword. Random. Like, there's hairs in, you know, Mrs. Cadaver and Mrs. Partridge's house because, you know, everyone has hair on their head and it naturally falls out. That's like, naturally you lose so many pieces of hair a day and she just picked up hairs and like you don't know who those are like it's in someone else's house and they just told mrs partridge oh we're just stopping by which is probably a little bit out of character for them um i don't think phoebe's totally knows everything about sal's mother obviously she knows sal doesn't have a mom like with her you know because it's just her and her dad phoebe knows that but she does not know what happened to sal's mom so she was kind of trying to tell her there like you know talking about how what happened with her mother but Sal, but phoebe kind of like wouldn't listen and she just rolled out and she said sal you know it's being terrible well or yeah sal's being terrible even though sal's really trying to be like hey you know maybe she just couldn't tell you maybe it was too hard you know that type of thing but anyways it's like really late at night and now it's dark and phoebe left her ran home so when I got home, I had to creep up to my room. I remember how Phoebe had shown me something in her room that reminded her of her mother. A handmade birthday card, a photograph of Phoebe and her mother, and a bar of lavender soap. When Phoebe pulled the blouse out of the closet, she said she could see her mother standing at the ironing board, smoothing the blouse with her hand. The wall opposite Phoebe's bed was painting violet, she said. My mother painted it last summer while I was painting the trim at the bottom. And I knew exactly what Phoebe was doing and exactly why. I had done the same thing when my mother left. My father was right. My mother did haunt our house in by banks and the fields and the barn. She was everywhere. She couldn't look at a single thing without, you couldn't look at a single thing without being reminded of her. So when they say, like, obviously the mom wasn't actually haunting the house, so unless you believe in ghosts, but wasn't actually haunting the house. But their meaning is you remember everything about it. So, like, for instance, you know, if one day your mother, you know, even left for a trip, we're not saying your mother left or died or disappeared or anything. We don't know what happened to her mom yet. We, we don't know. We have not found out whether her mom is dead or not. That has not been told yet. 
but you know you can picture someone in their house in your house and then it's kind of like if they weren't there so like for instance me and my husband, Mr. Kneifel, we sit in the same spots at our dinner table every day. So if Mr. Kneifel wasn't to be at our house and I was in my seat, his seat would be empty. And when I would look at that chair, I would see him. You know what I mean? Like, is the house really haunted? No, it's just kind of like when you look around, you see people, you know, just like at school. Like if your best friend's not at school one day and you look over at their seat, you're like, ah. Oh. Well, this stinks, you know, where are they? And you kind of feel that like emptiness. So for Sal and her father, they literally had to move because all they felt was emptiness because they, everywhere they looked, they saw their mother for some reason. So Phoebe was talking about like, oh, look at this blouse. My mother irons this blouse. And she's seeing her mother everywhere just because she wants to remember her. My house is not, my house is not haunted. I don't believe in ghosts first off, so. And when we moved to Euclid, one of the first things I did was unpack gifts my mother had given me. On the wall, I tacked the poster of the red hen, which my mother had given me for my fifth birthday. I don't believe in any supernatural thing, okay? That's just it's not my thing. And that, that has nothing to do with what we're talking about. And the drawing of the barn she had given me for my last birthday. On the desk were pictures of her and cards from her. On the bookshelf, the wooden animal and books were presents from her. Sometimes I would walk around the room and look at each of these things and try to remember exactly the day she'd given to me. I tried to picture what the weather was like and uh, what the room, what room we were in and what she was wearing and what precisely she had said. This was not a game. It was necessary, crucial thing to do. If I did not have these things and remember these occasions, then she might disappear forever. She might have never been there. So lots of time when you lose someone or someone leaves. Remember, we don't know like what happened to her mom yet because like she's trying to get to her mom by her birthday to bring her back. So we don't know. We don't know what's up with that. But anyways, she's saying like if she doesn't remember every little thing about her mom and if she forgets things about her mom, it'll be like her mom was never there. And that happens a lot of time when people do lose someone in their life or someone leaves their life. You try to remember them as much as possible because you think if you don't think about them, then like they just weren't there. Like you want to remember them. Mm -hmm. in my bureau were three things of hers that i had taken from her closet after she left a red fringe shawl a blue sweater and a yellow flowered cotton dress that was always my favorite these things had her smell on them once before she left my mother said that if you visualize something happening you can make it happen for example if you were able to run a race you visualize yourself running the race and crossing the finish line first and presto when the the time comes, it really happens. The only thing I did not understand was how everyone visualized himself winning the race. Still, when she left, this is what I did. I visualized her reaching for the phone. Then I visualized her dialing the phone. Then I visualized our phone number clicking through the wires. I visualized the phone ringing. It did not ring. I visualized her riding the bus back to buy banks. I visualized her walking up the driveway. I visualized her opening the door. It did not happen. No fun. I was thinking about all this that night after Phoebe and I crept into Mrs. Cadaver's house. I also thought about Ben and I had a sudden urge to run over to the Finneys and ask him where his own mother was, but it was too late. The Finneys would be asleep. Instead, I lay there thinking about the poem about the traveler and I could see the tide rising and falling and this horrible white hand snatching the traveler. How could it be normal, the traveler dying? And how could such a thing be normal and terrifying both at the same time? I stayed awake the whole night. I knew that if I closed my eyes, I would see the tide in the white hands. I thought about Mr. Winterbottom crying. That was the saddest thing. It was sadder than seeing my own father cry because my father is the sort of person you might expect to cry if he were terribly upset. But I had never, ever expected Mr. Winterbottom, stiff Mr. Winterbottom to cry. It was the first time I realized that he actually cared about Mrs. Winterbottom. As soon as it was daylight, I phoned Phoebe. Phoebe, we've got to find her. That's what I've been telling you she said all right we're gonna stop right there don't leave me yet though don't leave me all right so be or sal stayed up the whole night and she's finally decided like yes we need to find phoebe's mother no matter what we need to find her so hopefully they're gonna be able to do that the next few chapters just get really really good yeah, I don't know who has the poppet things out in a Mrs. Jones's class, but I'm going to let you know if I find them, I'm going to take them because you are not allowed to have them out during class. Okay, just because Mrs. Jones isn't there doesn't mean the rules change. Okay.
It's not fair to distract others, Mrs. Jones's class. But we still have about seven minutes, so you don't leave me yet. You are free to uh, – I literally just said she doesn't allow them during class, Michaela. I literally just said that. Literally. I said she does not allow them. So, anyways – um, no, I forgot what I was going to say. Yeah, I don't remember. Anyways, you may read for AR for the next few minutes. Um, we will have another ReadWorks next week. Um, all of you on here, though, I think finished your ReadWorks. So I don't have to say anyone finished your ReadWorks because I think everyone here is done. So thank you for coming. See you later. Bye-bye. Mark, what are you supposed to be doing? What was your assignment for reading RTI today?